Awesome. I just realized it wasn't recording previously, which is fine, but I'm glad you make it. I hope Michael or uh, yeah, Mike can make it. Kathy. I, I will to try to poke him. Please do. We've got lots of activity on board farm. So Eric, I'll, I'm gonna pack up a couple more boards of hardware and although I don't have time to get Qualcomm to figure out the shipping because they're a pain in the butt, <laughs> um, do you mind if I drop them off at Imagination and have them? Fine with me. Over? Yeah. Whoever does it. Okay. All right, I'll do that. Too many hoops to jump through here to get something shipped. Yeah, that's understandable. When is your when is your last day? Uh, tomorrow. Oh. I I we will we will miss you from Qualcomm. Although I mean, you're still going to be involved. So. Yeah, I'll 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 stay involved. Wait a few more minutes. I will have all the fun and none of the <laughs> none of the extras. Of course. Uh, we'll wait a few more minutes, but got a got a good turnout so far. So I do see that uh, Naresh is on the call. He's from Qualcomm Atheros. Oh, well. In India, in fact. Oh, wow. What time is it there, Naresh? Late. 10.30. Oh, well, 10.30 is not too bad. I mean, you just get some good good open source stuff done and right before you go to bed, it's, it's a great way to, to, you know, round out your day. Thank you. Well, I suppose you probably should get started since uh, since uh, folks are here. Um, I will just share my screen so we have something to put on the video when it's there. Um, thank you, everyone, for coming. Uh, really appreciate uh, the great turnout today. It's awesome. Um, uh, just, uh, for those who, uh, who may not know me, uh, my name's Eric, Eric Schultz. I'm the, uh, community manager at Purple. I'm also, uh, doing some work involved in the, uh, board farm and, uh, and getting a re remote board farm running and, uh, and things like that. So, um, as always, the meetings are recorded. We post them on, on YouTube. If that's a problem for anyone, please let me know now or, um, or let me know uh, after the fact, and we can we can try to figure out a way to to handle that. But uh, by default, we put them on YouTube so people can other people who who weren't here can see them. Um, so uh, I guess we we usually just kind of do a roundtable. Um, but uh, if that's how we want to get started, um, I'm happy to uh, to to go that way. Uh, so um, anyone who wants to go first. Wait a minute, that's that didn't work. Okay, Hauke, what are you doing in OpenWRT and uh, um and whatnot? Hauke, you're we can't hear you. You're muted. Um. Oh no! Do you hear me now? We can hear you now. Do you hear me? Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Um, not really that much. I'm not doing doing that much. Um, so, but we are interested in. So at least uh, I think Casey brought it up about a month ago or so. Uh, but it would be good if um, Purple could uh, fund some some projects in OpenWRT and at least uh, Lantic or Intel would also like 
uh, is also interested in this idea. So we already have some topics um, which we would be interested in having in OpenWRT. So you can also get them onto our boards. Mm -hmm. um, at least that would be. Um, so we had uh, the idea of Docker, or is anybody from from the imagination people working on Docker to get it running on MIPS CPUs? At least I tried, and it's uh, not so easy. Um, yeah, this Go stuff, and uh, yeah, well, that's the first step, and then there are probably more. Um, and uh, TR69 stack would also be nice to have something which is integrated in there. Uh, at least for, for our business, it, uh, this is very important because all the telcos are using it to um, uh, remotely configure and update and all this stuff. So remote management of the CPE devices and uh, having WRT would be nice. So I don't think it's really interesting for the norm for the community, so for the people that are flashing the, the firmware on their mm -hmm. routers themselves, but more for yeah, when you have an enterprise environment or even yeah, you have it um, as a CPU devices from your ISP or something like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think I that reminds me is that I think um was it Felix who said that he had done a TR sixty nine? Yeah, Felix has some stack, yes. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm wondering yeah. We, how much, but yeah. No, I agree with you on, on the on the funding, and Kathy and I had talked about that. We talked with Art, and we're, I think, just working out the exact process. Um, but it, it's, we, we absolutely, I, I think this will come pretty quickly. Yeah, um, Eric wrote a really good write-up of the whole program that uh, is is an excellent discussion of it, and then you know, maybe Eric, you want to mention some of the some of the points we're still trying to close on, like uh, you know, not necessarily how to fund it, but more more importantly, how to you know pull in ideas and then uh, which ideas get selected, kind of thing. Yeah, I, there were some there's some discussion. Uh, is how do we balance the need? Obviously, uh, since members are of Purple are funding this. How do we make sure that, that they have um, kind of like a, a final say, but make sure that the community doesn't get, uh, you know, uh, we don't overlook the needs of the community and that's a difficult balance. Um, so we're kind of looking at, you know, what are, what, how can we have either say um, either an advisory board or something along those lines of the core team to, you know, kind of look at, look at, um, look at project proposals and then say, you know, hey, does this does this look acceptable? Does does this fit the needs of the community? Does it fit the needs of the program? Um, and but it's just more of a it's making sure that everybody's on the same page with that as to how that should happen, what the exact mechanism is. I don't know if that described it. Kathy, do you think that described it well? Yeah, yeah. I mean basically we uh, Eric and I both trust the Open Liberty community as the best um, review panel, if you will. Uh, but it has to be in collaboration with, uh, for example, the Purple Technical Steering Committee that wants to please the members of Purple and say, okay, members of Purple, does you know, is this does this list of funded projects a, a good list to you as well, and make sure that they're happy with the selection as well. Yeah, the I, one one example that came up, and, and I don't think it's it's um, in the discussion. I don't think it's it's anything serious. Was 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 the example? Well, what if all the proposals we get are just for three D printers or something? Like, uh, does do does Purple have to fund it? And the question would be, well, and and the answer is, well, I don't think that's actually going to happen. And secondly, I don't think the an advisory board or or a recommendation of the core team is going to say that those are the only proposals that are any good. Um, but it's an, it's something we have to answer, like those type of things it is what happens if all the proposals are not the most, uh, not real, uh, important to the core team, to the members of purple, then are they going or to? Or like, how, okay, like you say, you know, you have TR69 on your list and say all the members and the carrier members coming from HGI are all on board. Yeah, we want that. And nobody responds to that. Nobody bids on it, if you will. 
then, you know. <clears throat> what do we do? Yeah, what do we do? Do we just fund other things just because? Or I'm sure there will be, at least initially, there will be plenty of good things to fund. That That is just the yeah. question that was brought up. Yeah. I, I really don't think it's going to be an issue either because uh, in, in more this is just an issue of – and I think the community could would, would generally feel that you know people are not going to just submit terrible proposals. And since the we're saying that the ideas would come from the community, and I, when I say the community, I mean – in a broad sense, I mean they come from from the the people we traditionally consider the OpenWRT community, like you know people who use it, people who flash, but also you know companies who use OpenWRT, companies who are members of Purple, things like that. If we're having proposals that are that are getting submitted, these ideas, and then people bid on them effectively, I don't think there's going to be any issue as long as we get a good set of ideas to start with. That will. Uh, decide whether these proposals fit the needs of of everybody. Yeah, that sounds uh, good. At least yeah. to me, it sounds uh, good. Uh, do it the way. Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Maybe we yeah, can. That... Do you think we can target by next week having a, a proposal review back to this? panel or do we need a little more time uh we can try uh i, I don't know if i don't yeah. know how that's going to go like yeah that's i think it's probably pushing or it. maybe within about two weeks or so yeah i think that's a good goal to kind of like you know towards the beginning of march to have a uh a, 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 basically yeah. a, a summary of kind of what our thoughts are and generally approved yeah. by everybody then then we just want to get going yeah and get started but uh, and it's good though that because there is lots of interest internally to purple that we do want to want to fund things. It's just how do we do it? Um, that's all we really have to figure out right now is that process. So good direction, I think. But yeah, thank you for bringing up Hauke. The more the more people talk about it, particularly from members like Lantique, it's it's very valuable. Yeah. So my assumption is that we get the support from Nantik, uh, at least when one of our <laughs> proposals is in there. Yeah, I'm um, sure. <clears throat> but probably there's also something interesting from the community or from QCA or other members. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> All right. Well, that yeah, that's awesome. Uh, by the way, I wanted to uh, to say hi to the to the new members, uh, Daniel and, and and Aresh. I mean, would you guys like to introduce yourself? To, you know, you're we're glad to have you here. Yeah, sure. So I I just found out about about Purple maybe a few days ago. Um, I work for a company that makes uh, uh, connectivity modules, boards um, for payment transaction portals. So POS, ATM, and that kind of thing. And we're kind of looking to get our hardware into to new markets. And I've, I'm new to this company and kind of have background in, in Linux. Knew a little bit about OpenWRT. I'd put it in one of my Linksys routers back in the day to turn it into a, a nice server uh, or a version um, similar to OpenWRT, I should say. So um, I'm really interested in putting o OpenWRT as the OS on on our devices, um, but also kind of uh, getting involved in uh, kind of the open source community around this, which is what Purple um, caught my, my attention and kind of interested in what you guys are, are doing. Um, my own kind of personal hobbyist interests are kind of in audio and in embedded uh, wearables, that kind of thing. And uh, even actually just this morning, I kind of saw a new chip by Qualcomm that really caught my attention with the kind of release this year, uh, or the first half of 2016 with a kind of uh, embedded ARM and LTE module. And yeah, kind of... Uh, in my spare time, trying to kind of stay involved with the, the whole kind of wireless wearables thing, especially as it relates to uh, audio, whether it's wireless earbuds, headphones, that kind of thing, and speakers. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. We appreciate you being here. Yeah, Daniel, I didn't catch the company. 
you work for? Uh, the company that I work for is called GPL Wireless. GPL Wireless, uh, as in D for D, D for Daniel. Oh, uh, P D. For Patrick. Yeah, GPL Wireless. GPL Wireless. We kind of uh, website needs a bit of updating, but yeah, we're kind of full service firmware, hardware, uh, networking, and software design. My role is a little more on kind of exploration hardware, um, uh, but also now that kind of ties into the firmware and, and OS. And yeah, I'm kind of uh, pushing hard for OpenWRT. I kind of like it and see it all over the place. Awesome. Well, we're glad you're here. We're, you know, we'd love to love to find out, you know, Ross happy to have uh, new new things to talk about and, and, uh, and also, uh, you know, figure out what, what we can do to help the community and how the community can grow. So thank you. Uh, no so how let me, can you like, I'm totally new to the whole thing. I've looked up a little bit about uh, the things that kind of Purple is in, involved in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, kind of curious about just this group. You guys meet like once once a week and uh, you kind of share, share stories. You kind of all seem to be coming from uh, industry a little bit, industry and open source. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, I we we tend to uh, you know our, our meetings tend to be kind of a round table. That's not necessarily like a uh, we have to be that way. It's kind of just what we've done so far, um, and and we all come from from different backgrounds. Obviously, Purple is a, a member organization, um, although with Purple WRT, anybody's welcome to join meetings. Uh, we we have members that are mostly companies that are involved in. Um, in, in the space, primarily like system on chip companies and, and companies like that. Uh, and so we, a lot of the people here uh, are people who work for one of those companies who has, you know, some, they use OpenWRT internally or, and they want to uh, grow the community, some, not just because it is, you know, not for nice warm and fuzzies, although that's good, but also because by growing the community, it helps obviously their business model, so. And, and I'll just comment, you know, we got started and one of our main goals, there is a mission statement, which was to bring industry and community closer. So mm -hmm. we've uh, had a couple of summits. The first one was kind of pretty informal. The second one was much more formal and was a real success last fall. So annual summits where we bring industry and community together. And then we have some themes that we'll re just review status or talk about during the weekly meetings uh, as we have the right people on the call, such as the board farm. And I think Eric will talk about that still and uh, funding funding development projects. So let's see, what are our main themes right now is would probably be the summit for 2016, which we haven't mm -hmm. even started talking about yet. Yeah. Um, the board farm and how to bring on more board farms mm -hmm. and uh, and these funding of projects in general. Um, I and think then the, uh, on top of that, it's just you you build relationships with core team members and so forth. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think uh, it, it it's uh, it's important is that uh, you know OpenWT is an awesome community, uh, but there aren't a lot of like meetings like this, and that's this is actually really valuable. I think. In, the, in that respect is that we actually have meetings. Uh, oh, and I missed uh, regulatory. That's always on a, a headache yeah, regulatory. on agenda. <laughs> yes, that often so comes the, up. Uh, the MIPS creator CI20, uh, was that a purple project? Uh, actually, no, it was an imagination uh, project, which was, uh, and they are a, one of the founding members of, of Purple. And we actually have two people from Imagination. So, I mean, they can, they can certainly speak on that more. Um, but is, is, if you have any other questions about it, but well, it wasn't was, really was, a Purple uh, project, but. I was kind of, well, yeah, it was one of the things that I kind of noticed that caught my attention as well as the, I think there's a new project on Kickstarter, like a CI40 or something like that. Um, yes. Um, but yeah, I thought that was uh, really interesting. I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, a big fan of Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and these kinds of boards. Uh, I'm also a uh, kind of uh, involved heavily with the makerspace here locally. Um, so put on workshops in either PCB design or building audio circuits, that kind of thing. And, uh, mm -hmm. with, uh, 
Uh, Where's locally? Uh, Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Say again? New, Br New Brunswick? Yeah, Moncton, New Brunswick, Canada. Okay. Okay. The East cool. Coast of Canada. We, uh, mm -hmm. we get a lot of snow. Uh, and uh, yeah, so, so the Moncton Public Library has a really cool makerspace with 3D printers and uh, soldering mm -hmm. iron and that kind of thing. And, um, always looking for new products to, to promote. I know I'm, I'm putting on an upcoming PCB design workshop uh, where I'll be talking a little bit about uh, Eagle CAD as well as things like Upverter. But um, yeah, always kind of looking to use some of the newer things that are out there. And I think one area that we haven't really done yet is a lot of, ironically, being my, my kind of job and all, but in the, in the kind of wireless uh, space. And, you know, we mm -hmm. promote Linux a lot, but yeah, that the CI40 kind of caught my attention from uh, a kind of DIY maker board, uh, especially as it relates to um, wireless and Internet of Things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And we, uh, the, the CI40 uh, does uh, is going to be open WRT compatible from from the start, we have the people on here who are who are adding that support uh, from imagination. So, I mean, if there's anything they'd like to say. Yeah. Um, hi, Eric. Jeremy here. Hey there. So, uh, yeah, it's always good when uh, when when we hear that someone's <laughs> spotted uh, the the uh, that Kickstarter project. Um, so, yeah, ab absolutely. The kind of people we're hoping will be interested in doing something with it, Daniel. Um, and as Eric says, yep, the, we have a team that are working uh, right now with um, uh, OpenWRT on that board. Um, they're fairly new to just the whole process of uh, trying to open source and uh, push stuff upstream. So it's, it's been a bit of a learning curve uh, for the team, but uh, that, that's where it's all going. So that's why we're, uh, it's, you know, it's an area that we're really keen on and it just fits uh, really well with purple. So that, that's why we're here, just to try and engage um, and uh, do what we can. We, uh, we've also got, uh, Paul is uh, our assurance um, lead on all of this. Uh, he's been trying to get some of his guys in, involved in the, uh, using the the build farm uh, board farm board farm stuff so uh, he may, may have an update on there but that's the kind of thing that yeah we'd be keen on just uh, getting some ci40 boards uh up and running um with the uh, with the board farm as well to go go back to your ci20 question um i think that came before purple even um, mm -hmm. and um, it, we do have a uh, an open WRT support on that board as well as uh, other OS's um, it's it was a kind of just our first experiment in just well hey we should just do a developer board and just um, uh, it was an opportunity for uh, any, anyone to any uh, developers to play around with the uh, the GPU. Um, as you, as you've seen, the CR four is a bit more kind of yeah really focused to just trying to get um, an end to end IoT solution uh, uh, going. So uh, yeah, happy uh, happy to talk talk more and. Uh, uh, any any kind of info along the line you want to happy to help great um, I'm now looking forward to kind of getting more involved and learning more about uh, some of the things that people in uh, these groups are working on um, awesome sounds good well, thank you Daniel for coming definitely so Eric I see that Mike joined is that Mike Anderson yeah, it's me. Cool. Sorry, I'm late. Hey, I'm Mike. Just I'd stop in, say hi, see what's going on. Glad you're here. Yeah, we will. We'll have to talk about board farm stuff uh, later in the meeting. Um, do you have any time? Um, uh, sure. Yeah. Constraints or? Uh, okay. Well, I, at eleven forty-five, okay. I have to leave. But besides that. 
So okay. we were just doing okay. intro of Daniel, who's new, and then Naresh. Uh, I messed up the invite last week, but Naresh is on the call today too from the India office. All right, cool. So Naresh and yeah. Mike, do you guys want to introduce yourselves? Uh, well, I introduced myself uh, one or two weeks ago. I, uh, well, Kathy wasn't here, but uh, I was here with a few other people. So, uh, unless there's more people here this time, there are some new people. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm just uh, another software developer at uh, Qualcomm. I have a few spare cycles in my time to to help with some uh, automated testing. That's about it for me. Okay. Awesome. Naresh? Yeah, uh, Naresh, uh, again from Qualcomm, uh, working with uh, Qualcomm chips IPQ4019 and IPQ806X and uh, MIPS, a uh, couple of MIPS chips. And again, uh, I'm new to OpenWRT as well as open source. Uh, most of my life I was in the proprietary software, so I'm just new and learning things. Awesome. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of open source. We're, we're glad to have Thank you. you. Thank hey, you. Quick, quick question, Naresh. Uh, I looked at those chips just this morning, actually, and uh, I'm quite curious about the MDM 9206 and 07 and wondering when data sheets uh, are going to be available for those chips uh, if they're not already. Uh, maybe, um, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe, uh, maybe I can even kind of send you a message offline or something like that. Um, I'm kind of assuming that that chip's at the top of your head, but maybe that's not. Uh... You say MDM as in uh, the, an LTE modem that's, chip? That's right. Yeah, so Naresh and Mike aren't necessarily in the modem side of the house, but, um, but I, I can look it up and see if. Okay, yeah, fair enough. I figured I'd just I just put it up there in case uh, uh, I, I did a you know a bit of a search on uh, data data sheet you know found specs but kind of looking and curious if one already exists or not. But yeah, I don't want to I don't want to take take over the meeting with uh, my my requests. No, that's well. Thank you. No, it's uh, I mean this is a great place to bring this bring this stuff up. So thank you. Cool, cool. Awesome. So, uh, Paul, do you want to do you want to go next and talk about what you've been working on and stuff? Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, so there are a few people who I haven't recognized from previous calls. So, um, those who I've already introduced myself to, apologies, do it again. I also got a bit of an introduction there from Jeremy. Uh, so, we work at Imagination Technologies, um, heading up the assurance part of the systems team. The systems team deal with uh, well a few projects, one of them being the Creator CI40 project. Um, so my team are quite keen on using Board Farm uh, in sort of two areas. One is just making sure that uh, our new OpenWRT commits get tested before they get pushed up, and then also making sure that uh, anybody else's commits get tested on our hardware as well. So we're just having a look now at um, getting Board Farm working on any old OpenWRT router before we try and get it on CI40. Mm -hmm. um, I, Nick Kill, who's my guy who's working on this, um, was hoping to join again tonight, but wasn't able to. Uh, oh. I, I suspect, you know, it's pretty late for India. So <laughs> that's probably the reason, but uh, he's he's got all his equipment together. He's, I think he's pretty close to, uh, having a go at running some tests and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. So that's where we are. It's just setting up the the interfaces, I think. Uh, so hopefully next week we'll have quite a bit more information. Awesome. Uh, I am I am in a similar boat. Uh, our use case is slightly different, but uh, I, I, one thing I do want to do is, is encourage him to submit uh, patches. Uh, that's actually something that that's really good, and and I'm, I hope you know. I'm sure Mike's seen that we've had, uh, I think, five pull requests in the last week for Board Farm, and uh, Mike was kind enough to actually uh, put me on as a as a committer, so I can accept those pull requests. Although I I do prefer having Mike look them over since it's not uh, a 
piece of software I know as well as he does by any means. Yeah, so um, I made you admin so you could have more control, yep. especially when I'm busy. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I will take a, a look and maybe you can tell me if there's a place where I can SSH to and try to like use it and sort of work out some of the bugs and, and get it working for you on your system. Um, no, mine actually is not so much things that I would, I probably can, I can do that myself. The big okay. thing that, uh, I mean, I'll probably need to talk to you a little bit about it. Uh, one thing that we're, we're trying to do is, on, I, you know, I don't want to take over the meeting, but one, one problem that I'm having is that I have to run, um, I have to, when people access one of the WAN or LAN devices, they have to be connected as a non-root user. So I'm having to, to kind of like figure out a way to move some of that setup stuff into like a service or something that they can just connect with, uh, you know, through IPC or something once they're on the device, um, okay. which is a little bit quirky. I understand. Okay. Most people don't have that use case. Huh. Okay. Um, yeah, we, we can talk about that. Yeah. Um, and I, I kind of have an idea on how to do that, but um, yeah, definitely. But one thing is, is, is I know we have a lot of, uh, we have a number of, of, of pull requests, so we'd certainly encourage more and we can, um, we can talk over the the pull requests. We can either do it at this meeting or a different meeting or, or whatever people, uh, if we want to or not. I'm I'm open to to whatever idea. Any thoughts? Uh, but we, that, we we can use GitHub and and talk about pull okay. requests there. Okay, uh, sounds it's good. Usually, my favorite way to go. Awesome. All right. Um, Paul, do you have any more, uh, any, like feedback on, on board farm or like things that are coming up that you know of so that, um, Mike and I can actually, uh, you know, think about it ahead of time or, uh, unfortunately not. I think cause, no. uh, I was hoping, I, I'm not even sure whether Nikki would have had an update for us either. So I'll have to That's catch okay. up with him tomorrow, but we weren't, I wasn't. <laughs> Thinking that I was thinking he was joining, so okay. I can get the information. No, no problem. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Um, anything uh, from the IMG uh, folks? The the ones that's marked IMG, not Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's actually Jeremy and Jose uh, hey is, there. is with me here. Um. I, I don't have any useful uh, update. Um, Jose shaking his head. <laughs> we're, we're, we're just uh, here to uh, show willing, uh, but without really anything particularly new and exciting to come and share, I'm afraid, this week. Mm -hmm. That's okay. Well, we're glad you're here. I'm glad you're involved in discussions and, and whatnot. It's good Thank just you. to uh, just to sort of stay in touch and uh, yeah, you know, keep up with uh, what's going on. Really, absolutely, absolutely. So, Eric, you mentioned you are roughly the same stage as we are. Yeah. Um, I mean, has there been any uh, little hurdles you've had to jump over in case we are not quite at the same place, and it would be useful for us to have any details of how to avoid problems or something like that? I don't know if there's been any any per se hurt. I mean, there's there've been things that I'm, I've tried to to understand. Uh, there's, I mean, I think I think Mike could could speak to this as well. There there are a number of kind of assumptions, and I've uh, that are in Board Farm, and for the most part, I've tried to put those into issues on GitHub. Um, mm -hmm. So there are a list of things that I've noticed that's like these are things that we probably should change um, the, what the process, how exactly we change them. I don't know, but they're, they're things that have come up. Uh, so I would encourage um, anybody else, uh, you know, who's working on, uh, with board farm to, to submit issues. Cause at least we can get a list of them and discuss how to actually as a community fix them instead of doing one offs and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, the big one that I had was I was not using a serial server so there was um, a small fix that needs to be done, um, it, but that requires a configuration change and how to change the configuration file. And that was um, that I put on there 
because if you're not connecting to an open gear serial server, it's a little, um, it doesn't quite work. Great. Yeah, and I imagine that the devices that you're using, you probably don't even have serial access, or, or do you, to uh, consumer devices? Well, on the CI40, we would do. Um, on, a, on the, any old consumer open T router, probably not. Uh, so that we were thinking of starting on on sort of a standard router that we opened our IT on. Maybe that's not the best approach. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, you might be able to. A lot of the, um, depending on what the router is, you may have. Uh, somebody may have already added serial to it, and a lot of those have like headers for serial. I again, they may not be on the outside, but they're sure, inside, sure. Inside it, there may be headers. Um. But uh, obviously, that's a little more error prone. Yeah. OK. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Thanks. Thanks for the heads up. Definitely. So in the open WIT wiki, there's some documentation. So mostly for, for lots of boards, consumer boards, there's documentation and also where to find material uh, on the boards. Often it's not um, populated, so just to have to, uh, a pet and then you have to solder something on it or something mm -hmm. like this. Most of them have uh, serial available, and most of them don't have any password or something like that. OK. Consumer Thanks. device, that's something you can get from yeah, so, Amazon or something like this. So Eric, do you have the the minimal board farm thing working now, set up? Uh, no, because I was doing them, because I have to do the modifications to to not run as root. That's the big thing that's slowing me down. Um, because I I need to be able to have people not run as root. Um, but there isn't anything except root. So what do you? No, not on the board itself for the LAN and WAN devices. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. You could just uh, create a user account called Tester, and it logs in as that Tester account. Yes, and I, I thought of that. The the problem is that is is when you can is a lot of the a number of things that the board farm on in Debian box. There's a number of things that happen when you set it up as a land device. It like has to do like apt get and oh there's, sure, and all those have to run as root. My thinking on that is I never, I never personally liked doing that. We could always just um, stop doing those uh, those commands. Those we did it just as a convenience because we wanted to keep those up to date, but maybe that should be done, you know, elsewhere and not as part of testing. No, I, so I would it could, be, it could be as simple as just, you know, we could just remove those commands that would need root. There's a number of like, like things like clearing the, um, like the IP cache, the, the ARP, um, I, there's a way. I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do it without going to root. But by um, default, yeah, I see what you're saying. Uh, the the other thing you can or we could do is um, you can give uh, accounts in Linux uh, access to use certain commands like mm -hmm. you know ARP commands or whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's another option. Yeah, we. But can yeah, do I that. see what you mean. It's kind of like you know a pain to deal with a user access. <laughs> Yeah, what my thought was was again to to say on these devices where I can't have it run as root for the LAN and the WAN, have a service running that you can connect via like IPC. So instead of saying, "Oh, I'm going to run these commands," just say, "I want to run through IPC." Just say, "Set up LAN cl client or something," and then it would run inside the service that's running as root it would run all those commands. I don't know if that, that if I'm overthinking the process, but it seems like it'd be more flexible long term. Um I don't know. You would know that better than I would, Mike. I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Um just because we use it, you know, internally, we we let root access happen, but I could see how, you know, this is something that you want to be a bit more public, that you'd want to be a bit more secure than that. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to think about that. I, I'm not actually sure. Okay. Yeah, definitely. Admittedly, what we're doing is a little bit different use case. Uh, and for those who, uh, for Daniel and Naresh, uh, the project I'm working on is, um, is we have this this project from Qualcomm called Board Farm, and it basically allows you to run 
both automated tests on on a router um, for things like tech test, testing performance and if you know the different interfaces work and things like that. Um, but also to be able to log into the router and and, and do some sort of a manual testing. Um, and uh, in in most use cases, everybody uh, they have complete control over the people that are uh, running the commands, and um, it, and that is it's normally you can have the LAN and the WAN device that are connected to you for verifying performance. You can have uh, root, those people running as root. There's no problem because obviously they all work for the same company. Uh, in the case of Purple, I'm trying to get this so that. Uh, community members can basically um, make their own builds of OpenWRT, upload them to a router, and then do testing to see if things work. So we can do some sort of, um, you know, basically improve the the quality over time. And committers actually know if 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 patches actually work on the router and things like that. But there are a lot of uh, issues involved in this that I'm I'm discovering. They're, they're solvable, right. but. Naresh actually has a board farm rack in Chennai, so he's familiar. Oh, okay, awesome. <laughs> um, Mike is helping us lag on project. I think Matt What's... McClintock helped set that up there. Awesome. Um, I wanted to say, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, we, the other reason that we were kind of okay with root access is because uh, we use uh, VMs, and if a VM ever gets kind of messed up or whatever, it it's literally like 30 seconds to just mm -hmm. like pop in a new image for that VM, and, and you just recover it or re restore state, basically. Mm -hmm. um, so it wasn't ever a big deal for us. Understandable, yeah. All right. Well, uh, anyone else have anything to talk about this meeting? I nothing else from us. <clears throat> awesome. Yeah. All right. Uh, is I we traditionally haven't had much uh, focus on these meetings. Is do you think that? that's something that people would want in the future, be like more of a, an agenda or particular topics to bring up? Um, well, I think we, we could, I could add to the notes, like just bring up topics to you in advance if you wanna bring something to the agenda. And then the only other thing would be uh, <clears throat> uh, highlight quick status on the ongoing projects, such as the board farm, uh, the, pro funding projects, any news on regulatory stuff that or security, and then um, mm -hmm. summit, open up summit or, and then other things that are going on, mm -hmm. have people point to things that are interesting. Okay, I think that's a good idea. I like that idea. Yeah, I like the idea of sticky topics that, mm -hmm. that you just cover uh, every week, maybe, uh, just as Kathy says, some of those key points. Okay, I think that's a good idea. I like that. That actually reminds me about regulatory. Um, there was uh, a bit of a, a hubbub, to say the least, um, with uh, some TP-Link routers that uh, the community, they had created a firmware update that now apparently prevents people from uh, uploading their own version of, of their own firmware. Um, and apparently when some folks contacted them, people had said that they were told that the reason was actually due to the FCC regulations. Um, so uh, that was uh, a, a real big deal to say the least. So uh, I don't know where it's going to go from there and how, how other companies are going to do that. Um, other people have mentioned that TP-Link has, has said this in the past before the regulations were even in effect. So they may be just doing this for other reasons, but I don't know. Yeah, I've, uh, I've heard something similar actually with the kind of coming uh, IoT uh, spectrum uh, yep. demands. 
that uh, router companies are going to be a little bit stricter on uh, loading loading new firmware because FCC is kind of cracking down on them to be more diligent with uh, things that are going in the spectrum uh, or devices that are already in the spectrum. And so I think uh, I think that's the article that I had read was focusing on maybe it was TP Link that was uh, singled out as being worried about what their devices are doing in the spectrum with firmware that isn't theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is a topic that, that FCC regulations have come up and, um, it's still the, the problem that, that everybody's dealing with is that it's so vague as to what the rules are right now that even, um, that we have, you know, we've been trying to understand it and it, it just doesn't seem like it's clear as to what the FCC is actually requiring. Um, yeah. I will be speaking on this though. If anybody's at, at Libre, uh, Libre planet in, uh, in March, I will be speaking on this topic and, um, I'll be writing some blog posts for my personal blog in a couple of days on, on to discuss the topic as well. Okay. And, and where is Libre Planet that you're speaking at? Where is it located? It is at MIT. It's at okay. MIT in Boston. Um, yes. Edward Snowden will be will be keynoting. Um, or as I like to say, he will be opening for me. Um, that's probably <laughs> exaggerating, but you know, whatever makes me feel better. Okay, good. So I think we'll have a awesome. you know goal of getting this uh, project funding document completed so we can process that and then learning mm -hmm. when the new board farms come online. Awesome. Be good. Great. Sounds good. Thanks. Thank you. All right, thanks. Yep. Bye. 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 Bye.